on a fire. So your specific <laughs> medical needs has a very specific smell that, that your body reacts to, and your your it brain's does. able to interpret that as this is going to be medicine. I've seen it, you know, firsthand. So can you kind of talk about that when you first smell um, the flower sure. and, and you, how, how you express the oil? and kind of this, this And this is a critical reason for that is because in any dispensary experience throughout America, you cannot walk in and you don't have the ability to open and smell the strains is at that your right? disposal. You don't. You just don't. In many cases, you don't even have the ability to handle them. If you do handle the products, sure. they have to take them back over the counter. There was one, I just recently did a dispensary tour in California who's been doing this legally for about 26 years, is <clears throat> through the 10 dispensaries that I visited, there was probably an average of three to four out of 60 products that had enough information from a patient perspective, just like yourself, to go in and gain which products would actually give you the medicinal benefits and value. Sure. And so that would be the first line of, of observation. And I couldn't find that. There were certain uh, things that uh, I, I had to be specific to look for. Uh, yeah. What is the major cannabinoids, right? Hey, what is what THC? What is you're CBD? You're putting a lot of trust in the person that's behind the counter. That's and, right. Um, you know, back, I guess, you know, for me, I left before coronavirus and all this stuff happened in Denver. We, we kind of left Denver because of all that and the restrictions that were on driving and, and whatnot. So we, we just came down to, to get away basically from, from all that and happened to just like move down here and never look back, you know, sold our house and, and left Denver. But at the time, you know, you could go into uh, dispensaries you could th th they were lined up on the top of counters and you could literally twist the top off of them and smell each one when of them. was that you know uh from uh january up to uh, you know what year t 2019 wow where oh all the way from in Durango and all like all Colorado, over. they allow you to pop it and, and, and smell it. Oh yeah, for sure. That's interesting. That's I awesome. mean, I don't know about in the last three years. I haven't been. Oh, know, since COVID, and, and maybe that's since COVID. It. I guarantee you, they they probably locked that down. And you're yeah. you know, it is what it is. Out of the hundred different strains, you've five hundred plus strains you've ever smelled or you know um, looked at or tried. How many of those fit Doug's needs? Sure. So so it's very few. Because the thing is, I have like an array of symptoms, upwards of like 15 or 16 symptoms. So when I go in and I'll smell uh, a, a certain strain and I'll open the top of it and it's fresh and I can smell it, I can tell right away if it's going to take away my nausea or if it's going to take away like that relief as far as I can breathe a little bit, you know, actually just the the fragrance of it almost gives me relief uh mm -hmm. you know just by smelling it and then on top of that you know you at, from, from my perspective and point of view when i was out there and even if if today what i was going to do is you know go through the different dispensaries get the smallest amount that i can smell it really nicely uh it's, smell it to really to to see if it's going to first of all take away that watery taste because that automatically is is like if i can smell it right away and it takes the watery taste out of my mouth i know it's going to be effective as far as that but i don't know if it's going to help the other 15 or some odd symptoms what do you mean by watery taste you know like when you're about to th throw up you know when you're about to vomit you have your mouth produces this watery mm -hmm. you know water in your mouth because sure. you're it's going to help you get it out Pre i guess pre-vomit sure i guess uh, so my mouth you know uh, lives with that so the the, the cannabis doesn't give me dry mouth it just takes away the watery taste of my mouth and that's it's just, the equilibrium you talk so about and, and nice. let me let me yeah. ask you when did you acquire the ability to realize that with your nose right because it started in 2002 when your friend offered you you know, just uh, whatever cannabis and you inhaled it and it worked. But on your path Yeah, of just struggle, being conscious of it, I guess. <clears throat> uh, when was it that you started, you know, realizing that? Was it in... I mean, probably in 2016 or so and, you know... So fairly recent, given a sure, yeah. 19, 20 year struggle. Oh, yeah. And that's within the last well, five to. to six years. I, I didn't really have to before that, you know what I mean? And where it wasn't a con it wasn't something that I needed to go do. It was like, hey, let me go to a place and smell a bunch of different 
kinds of strengths. But you were in a place where you could do that, and that's critically important. Where was that? I was, and I did, uh, when I did that. When you were able to start smelling them. In, in, in Durango, Colorado. Yeah, so you had access to it. There were limited access opticals. You actually had access to it. So patients like yourself sure. could walk into a recreational or a medicinal dispensary yeah. and have access to sample and smell those strains that work for you. Absolutely. How much burden did that take out of your uh, take off of your life? To oh have my gosh, there was no stress in it. I mean, it was like it, not not really. It, not only did it not, it took away stress, right? It didn't just like ease the stress. It like it gave you a lifeline. It gave me a hope a little bit. Yeah. Where I was like, man, yeah. okay, you know what? So if I do run out and I'm I'm down to Boom. this, I can yeah. like I can go in here and I can go smell, smell, smell. Bingo! I got yeah. one that at least is going to take away this. Hopefully, it'll help with some other ones. You know. But I mean? not only this, just like a pharmacy in your neighborhood, if you establish a relationship with a good bud tender, right, and they sure. know who you are and they know your needs, Simple. and you can help shape the conversation of you know yeah. their consumer habits and say, hey, look. Look at the tack, right? Look at the difference between and the diversity between the major cannabinoids, minor cannabinoids. Get something with high terpene saturation, right? Sure. I, one of the products I pulled off uh, the shelf in California because it was open and, and over the course of five days, I, I went into 10 dispensaries because they were so accessible and the conversation was different and sure. then it was the same and the patient needs and consumer needs. And not once do they the say weed, marijuana, cannabis even. They say medicine because that's really at the <clears throat> root of it what it is. But it, in, it's a medicine. E even in a state that has been doing it so long, right, the, the, the user base and the needs of the patient population come online consistently every year. So you have new patients who have never used it even in California, sure. right? And for those who are thinking in Louisiana, because this is the conversation we have with lawmakers, and this is the critical thing, is that all the lawmakers respond, we don't want to be California, you know, to the point that sure. it turns into... Um, I found myself... And I went to, you know, the Veterans Cannabis Summit uh, in, in 2020, just before pre-COVID. And, uh, and this is a, a state has been doing it for a very long time. In Louisiana, we don't talk about it. This is not a conversa uh, common conversation. You don't say marijuana sure. out loud, yeah, right. right? And so I, I go and I see some of the conversations that are being had. But most importantly, I see the conversations that are not being had, Amazing, right? Yeah. Because the voices are not being heard by patients in need because there is easy access for consumers to access through recreation, recreational or medicinal needs. But I think what you're going to start seeing as these states start coming online is that even those recreational users are using for medicinal needs, right? Managing the chronic pain, managing the eating, the insomnia, managing the stress, the eating, sleeping, digestion, memory, emotion, arousal, a lot of those things. And, and by empowering people by enhancing their education and, and, the, and how to integrate cannabis as a performance enhancer, you know, to integrate themselves back into a function, a functional society or to enhance performance of where they currently are, empower them by educating and, and, and guiding those experiences and having real conversations about cannabis. And There's no doubt.